You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Ivan, please go ahead and get us started. Hey, I'm Ivan Zak. I'm very excited to introduce today Ali Gunjevian. Ali is an architect and creative entrepreneur with a distinct desire for exploring new frontiers. He is co-founder of Studio Banana, a renowned European innovation design company. He also is a co-founder of Ostrich Pillow, the lifestyle brand that is redefining contemporary sleep and rest. Ali is co-founder and CEO of Mogi, the technology startup that is ready to revolutionize the cat care. Never one to shy away from the new and next Ali's journey, optimism and enthusiasms motivate others also to make the most of where the future is headed. Ali, thank you for finding the time. Welcome to the show. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me here. It's great to be here. We obviously want to talk about the cat care, but I'm very intrigued about the ostrich pillow. Can you tell us about that? Oh, yes. So I'll, I'll kick off with giving a bit of context. Ostrich Pillow was a product that was launched um, over 10 years ago. And we really discovered the power of and importance of sleep in our day to day. We found this piece of data from NASA, which said, if you power nap for 20 minutes a day, you can increase your productivity by 34%. And we thought, well, hold on a second. How come the whole world is not power napping? And something we're genuinely obsessed about is beautiful problems that can transform and have an impact on the world. Um, so we decided to create a product called the Ostrich Pillow, which was a, a pillow which some people might have seen, which is to sleep at your desk. You basically put it over your head like a scaphandra and you put your hands in it and you sleep on your desk. Visually super recognizable. And it went pretty wild. It went viral. Um, it was all over the news and everything from a Jimmy Kimball show all the way to a Jonathan Ross show. Um, it was gifted across the world. And today there's over a million products out in the world at the service of enabling sleep and rest. So as a brand has grown to support folks to sleep and rest in multiple different facets of our lives and uh, is having a great impact. So that's awesome because I'm, I'm very, uh, I started to focus in on sleep a couple of years ago and uh, I use Aura Ring to actually measure it. And uh, and it's it kind of, it's cool. It's gamifying the sleep hygiene, which I never, I'm being an ER vet, I never ever thought of, you know, sleep is important. And I paid uh, my dues <laughs> because of that. So now I'm really focusing on that. Well, let, let's switch to the cat care. So what is the the mission? What are you trying to achieve? And uh, you mentioned when we started the conversation today that this is a hardware gig as well. What are you trying to improve in the cat's life? Uh, so segueing from napping to cats, um, most people will be like, hey, is this about cat napping? And no, 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 it isn't. You know, we're really obsessed with, with big challenges. And one of the big challenges that we've identified is that actually we believe that cats is the, the pet of the future for the simple fact that its levels of autonomy are, are extremely high and the level of urbanity is really high. So we're living more and more in cities. And at the same time, we're, we like to have more and more freedom and a cat provides that to us. And it's not only our, our, our hypothesis, it's multiple other big companies we believe that the cat is really the pet of the future when it comes to growth. The, the space that we've identified here and it's something that's really important to us and rings home to everyone on the team, everyone on the team is you know, animal lover and cat lover. Um, many of us have cats and dogs. But what is really fascinating about cats is that cats over time have evolved to hide their, their weaknesses. Um, and in the wild, they would, if they should demonstrate their weaknesses, this basically means that you know, they're more susceptible to prey. Now, this is segued into our contemporary lives. And the, the problem that it presents is that because they're autonomous and because they're incredibly good at hiding their illnesses, and typically we can't recognize when they're suffering or in pain. And when we do, it's way too late to actually do anything about it. So typically we will come into the vet and you know bring our cats in and we'll say, hey, there's something wrong. And the vet will say, what's wrong? And we're like, oh, it's sleeping more than usual. And maybe it's you know, not as active as usual. And that's our narrative. And that's a pretty, pretty weak narrative. Now, if we compare this to a dog, a dog's you know, nose is his voice, his wagging, his activity is much more visibly recognizable for us. And we as humans empathize much more with dogs than we do with cats. So why, why am I explaining this narrative? Um, this narrative comes from really the opportunity in the challenge space that we've identified. How might we create 
a product that enables to give insights and a voice to our cats. And we've done this through a device called Moggy. Um, it's a small device that sits around the neck of the cat. It's a wearable that essentially tracks their physical movement. Through an AI model that we've de developed, we translate that physical movement into insights to be able to identify deviations in behavior. If I were to give an example, very physical example, if my cat is jumps an average of seven times a day, and suddenly there's regression in that, and we start jumping less and less over a period of time, and maybe it's jumping four times a day um, at the end of you know, three months. This information is an insight for both parents, but also vets. Now, if we go into the vet and say, hey, my cat's jumping less and less based on the data that I have here, the vet can take that data and say, this could be early signs of arthritis, or this might be caused by that thing, that scar he has on his leg. So it's, in, it's, it's information that leads to decision-making. We're not a decision-making tool. We're an insights tool at this stage um, with the aspiration of, of over time to be able to support um, greater decisions. It's so fascinating. So where did the genesis for this idea come from? You say you have a history of solving difficult problems and you're a creative guy. A little bit of understanding of, of how you got here would be really interesting. Yeah, so um, we um, there was a moment in time where we were having a conversation inside the studio, and there was, there was two colleagues talking to each other. One of them was talking about his child who was in hospital, and the, another one who reacted to that says, I completely know what you mean. My cat is really ill, and he's also in hospital. And one was talking about a child which had no voice at the time. So had you know, it's a child which, which was an infant, he was a baby, so he couldn't express his, his narrative, his pain or his suffering in words. And that connection between cats or pets not being able to express their suffering in words and child not being able to express their suffering in words was really critical to kind of like, there's a real aha moment. The only difference is that a child evolves and develops voice and a pet doesn't develop voice. And so that aha moment really ignited this opportunity of saying, how might we give a voice to our cats? And if I just kind of segue between insights and an AI natural language processor that we've built. So our product offers two real opportunities based on that aha moment. One of them is, how might we give a voice to our cats? But at the same time, we built this other layer to the product, which was a natural language processor, which will basically message you in the format of your cat, informing you in, in a chat format of what your cat's doing. If I can just give you an example. The cat's been walking around and playing all night, right, in terms of data. And play is bursts of energy of movement of over a period of time. That's from a data perspective. Translating that to the um, natural language processor, which is essentially a chat, will say, hey, Ivan, I've been running around all night. Um, wish you could join me. You know, so it's, it's, it's a very simple message, uh, and it really humanizes that. I can, you can see that on our website. You can see some examples of chat um, messages on our website. That's fascinating. And uh, I, can't, I, I keep thinking about the ostrich pillow and now connection to this, because now I'm thinking that if anybody will bring the cat to my hospital and say, hey, my cat's been sleeping more than usual, I would say, well, it just wants to be more productive. So it's having power naps to be 34% more productive. So what was the reception from A, from the vet community, and have you been able to present that to them? And what is the perception or reception from the pet ownership? And uh, how do they think about this? You know, it, it will be a, I, I don't, I'm pretty sure that a lot of owners wouldn't want to know what the cats think about them because cats are not really like dogs. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, there's all kinds of jokes out there about the cats that they don't really care about the owners. But what is, what is that reception of the market and on both sides, veterinary and pet owner? I'll start with the, with the end user, which is really our, our strategic target from a product position perspective. Re it's really, we focus so much on understanding who this user is, what their pains are, and how might we resolve them. The user's um, experience from the product is it's a friendly product. It's not trying to be a scientific product. It's not trying to break down things into, you know, into that scientific aspect. So it's accessible. You know, it's important to highlight that the relationship with our pets is an emotional one. It's not a scientific relationship. You don't want metrics um, on your pet. You want to be able to love your pet. That's, that's a relationship. It's, it's how do we enable these unique relationships? That's really at the forefront of what we're doing. And we've tried to work on a product which is friendly, accessible, and digestible. And when I say digestible, it's like those insights are presented in a fun way. They're presented through emojis. But yeah, of course, there's data behind it. And the natural language is, is an example of that. There's a lot of human and natural language that's also very shareable. 
why have we done it like that? Because we all know that if we have a fitness tracker around our wrist, we tend to put the fitness tracker on when we're doing exercise. But that's not good enough for a pet. You can't just have it on the pet, on your cat when their cat's not well. You have to have it on the majority of the time to be able to use it um, in a meaningful way. Now, from a consumer perspective, they're very interested in that health tracker for, for the cat because it's important that some people are like, oh, does this also have GPS location? No, it's not a GPS device, it's a health tracker. Um, and, that's, and that's the primary focus of our of what we provide. From the veterinary space, I think there's, there's been mixed reflections. Some are, hey, this is fascinating. Finally, I have a window into understanding what these cats are doing. And it's, it allows me to look at the data before they even walk in through the door, because you can share that data. So you actually, when someone's, when a cat's walking in through the door, you actually spend time assessing them and, and the physicality much more than prompting questions. So that's very useful. Accelerated decision-making. The other, um, group of um, people who have shown a lot of interest are tele um, vets right because when you're doing looking at looking at data before you actually have a conversation with the user is very very rich as opposed to just having you know that backwards and forwards with the user on the phone so uh, the reactions have been very positive it's very interesting what you said there and i actually you know again being an ar vet i'm quite a pragmatic guy and uh, and i never think about that actually we probably need more data driven as the vets, but then this human connection that pet owners have to the pet, they don't necessarily need the data. This approach is really, really cool. I never thought in that slice that when you're B2B compared to like B2C product, then you need to think about this, this personal touch, especially because one of the biggest drivers in the veterinary industry or the pet industry, one of them is that the population of pets is growing. The other one is that humanization of the pet factor and the whole, you know, anthropomorphos and then getting them as family member is getting more and more advanced. So therefore the consumer behavior is changing so much. So it's very, it's very interesting. The other question that I had is, so who is your competitor? Competitor and why are you better than them? This is this is like your softball and pitch moment because there's other trackers. People, you know, have been doing this. Uh, I know that cats are difficult to put the things on them that they would not mind. Uh, and also, there were a couple. Of, and you know, we were introdu introduced through someone from the Leap. Uh, program which is funded by Mars, if I'm not mistaken, that and they have a huge you know product that they acquired a few years ago, the Whistle. So, so how does that compare to the products on the market, and uh, and what are what are you better at? I think that there are, there are multiple other products on the market that serve pets, and I say pets, cats and dogs alike. So, the other products in the market say, hey, here's a GPS tracker for your dog or for your cat, and it's, I think it's really important to identify that. Dogs and cats have a very, there's, there's very few similarities with them. And we are 100% focused on cats, first of all. We don't know anything about dog. We're 100% focused on cats. So that, I think, that is our value proposition, just focusing on cats. And consequently, our product is designed for cats. It's super lightweight. Necks of, and the neck of a cat has nothing to do with the neck of a dog in terms of the strength. Um, so it's super lightweight. Our product is seven grams. And because we focus exclusively on health, so cats and health, we've created a product which has a very long battery life. So it has, a, a, you know, right now we're talking about eight weeks plus battery life on our device. And we've been able to achieve that because we're not focusing on location and we're not focusing on any pets. We're focusing exclusively on cats. There are some wonderful products out in the market which are GPS focused, and that's their primary focus when it comes to trackers. And that's something that is not part of our service offering now or in the near future. Our users are also not requesting this. So that's our current positioning. We believe we need to have a niche product for a niche audience and do that exceptionally well. And and when we do that exceptionally well, then we can gradually evolve and provide better products for our users that uh, ultimately resolve their needs. That's that's what we're the service of. So Ali, that's you know that that's amazing, and uh, that totally makes sense. Although you know, uh, well, you've been on the market now a couple of years, right? So I, you know, when when we build my previous company, it was always we were. You know, consumers are usually behaving in the way when you're saying, okay, this is our niche and this is what we're doing. And then, and then it's so tempting to start doing something else because so many customers go, well, I want this. And it's uh, being focused and saying no. I think that's the most important skill of an entrepreneur more than saying yes and building something. And uh, so what is the future? What is the big sort of vision? Call it five years from now. Where does 
the, your product go and where do you see this developing and then what what is that big sort of future looks like if i can look at the past um, have a view into the present and then projecting the future um so the past was very much about what is our focus what is our niche how might we do this exceptionally well in the present we've launched the product over 30 days ago um, on crowdfunding and there's already been like 500 units sold right so that is fantastic because we now now it's the time for us to kind of really learn from those users um understand what are the opportunities the pains they might have and to be able to add those things onto the product before delivery now we're in a pre-order phase on indiegogo so this is an opportunity for people to kind of jump on before that opportunity runs up because it provides it's very early stage folks who a are passionate about this and also passionate about technology and see the opportunity so jumping on now if i project if i just kind of take that abstract view into five years time i think what we need to do well from here going forward is a the value of the data that we're gathering and the opportunities in the ecosystem that that can provide at the service of the user. So if I could just um, step back from there, based on the data that we're gathering, how might we create an ultimate product experience for users, be it through vet support, be it televet or physical vet, how might that enrich that relationship and the longevity and the well-being of your cat to other services they might need. We could even go down the route of partnering up with some folks when it comes to personalized food. Why? Because we know what age your cat is, we know what breed it is, we know how active it is, we know how warm or cold in the environment they live in. So consequently, we can react to providing personalized services, personalized products for their specific needs. Now, if our aspiration is to become the largest cat data repository in the world, and to do that, um, our ambition is to be able to scale the business and to be able to have hundreds of thousands of users using our product actively important actively and with that we believe that we can not only be able to provide personalized products but ultimately um, improve the life of cats globally and um, and that is our ultimate goal and aspiration that's awesome ali so what's the most shocking thing that you've learned after you know prototyping the device putting it on some cats what's what's been like some one of your biggest insights or your biggest insight that kind of surprised you so when we've been testing this with folks, um, you know, you suddenly learn things which, uh, you know, data, data provides a window into, into real oddities, things that you had no idea. You know, we had some data from a, um, a cat, an earthquake, and it's interesting to see how the, the, the behavior of the cat before the earthquake, and we're like, hold on a second, the earthquake was, happened here, but the data, the cat was reacting before the earthquake, hold on a second. So it's just like, it's completely unprecedented piece of information, but suddenly it's like, a very simple insight, but then you obviously ask yourself, hold on, this was during a test period with a timestamp right or wrong. Um, but it suddenly windows into, suddenly it helps you recognize certain behaviors that you just, you've just never seen occur before. Um, that is one simple example. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It makes me think of the canary in the coal mine, right? Like maybe, maybe cats are a future earthquake predictors. <laughs> um, listen, Ali, it was great to have you on the show. We like to wrap up in the same way every week. Got a couple of questions for you. First is a YouTube, TED Talk, a book, something that's inspired you on your journey to create these fascinating products. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so um, how I built this, um, this fascinating book, it uh, gives a window into other entrepreneurs who are building great things and ultimately just talks about adversity and the challenges that one one faces through that journey. At the same time, what I find really inspiring about it is um, there's a feel good factor to building something hard. And generally when you're building something hard, um, it's important to be reminded that you are building something hard and have the have the encouragement to to go the extra mile. So I really encourage that read as well as the podcast. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the second question that we ask, is there anybody in the veterinary industry that you would recommend to be a guest on this show? Yeah. So um, um, Chloe from um, Poe is, um, is a platform, an adoption platform. It's a, it's a really interesting model of connecting adoption platforms to really give visibility to a greater ecosystem um, of people who are looking for pets, but really kind of framing them, presenting them in a way that it makes it much more accessible. So the platform is called Poe. It's, I think, actively primarily in Europe, um, but it's growing pretty fast. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.